Hello, everyone. Thank you so much again for um, watching our Missionary Spotlight series. This is our third interview. Um, it has been such a joy to talk to other Christians um, like the Westbrooks we just did back in October who are in Puerto Rico. And today I'm so excited to be talking with Sin, who is actually um, in the States. They are in Tampa, Florida, Temple Terrace, Florida, and they have been living in the States for eight years. But um, through our connection through Creation Revelation and um, getting illustrations to the brethren over, over there, um, we've been able to talk more about um, some of the difficulties or challenges that Christians face over in China. And it is so encouraging to hear of their dedication, their love, their peaceful way um, of coming together, and just the different challenges that they face that we don't face here. So I want us to be able to talk about this so you, the viewers, can know how to pray for your brethren over in China, how you can even help the cause of spreading the gospel over in that area. So, Sin, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I would love for you to tell our viewers about you and um, your family just here quickly. Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Sin, and my husband is Ming Hui. And now we live in Florida, uh, Temple Terrace, Florida. We also have a daughter, uh, Jean. And uh, we came to the state eight years ago. and. Uh, we are so thankful for God's blessing for our family. Well, we are so thankful that you're here. And um, her husband teaches at Florida College. Um, I graduated there. And so they're so excited to have him there. And um, so you've been here for eight years. That's that's quite a while. Um, but I would love to hear your own personal story of what when you first learned um, about God. Sure. So, um, so the first Christian from my family was my late grandma. And after uh, many life challenges, she became a Christian in her late 50s. And because I grew up most of the time, I spent my uh, most of the time I grew up with her because my parents were both uh, working. So usually I spend lots of time with her. And also because she's she couldn't really read the Bible, so she took me to the church with her, but it's the state church, which is controlled by the government. So she took me to the church with her, and I was reading the Bible to her and um, reading the hymns to her. So that's how I learned about Jesus. And also I saw her pray to God and um, try her best to memorize Bible verses. So that's um, she helped me to know more about God and more about Jesus. And later on, I moved to a small country called Singapore. And later on, I was baptized there and I learned the truth. Oh, that's so beautiful. Um, I love how you were reading for your grandmother mm -hmm. the scripture and um, reading the hymns. And um and I know that you've mentioned um, before, it's it's so interesting to think about um, the freedoms we enjoy here in America to practice our faith, to teach our children, but um, that is not really encouraged in China for children to learn um, the Bible, at least more now from what you and I have chatted about before. So it's beautiful that your grandmother was able to take you along with her um, yes. to help grow your faith and expose you to the truth. So um, are children normally allowed to attend church now? Has that changed at all? Yes. So now the new policy is um, children are not allowed to go to any churches, even the state churches. Yeah. So I think um, that law um, is not done without um, knowledge of how um, how fundamental it is for children when they learn the Bible at a young age, how foundational that is to our faith. Um, my parents exactly. were Christians. I was raised on God's word and that has seen me through and it is um, through many trials of my own and I'm doing the same with my children. And so I understand in a way why the government is limiting children to be exposed to the Bible at such a young age. 
yes. so does your own you you said your grandmother took you to church um, yes. as well so and your parents were working very hard I know that um, the culture really speaks more into um, working hard than going to church as much so does your family approve of your faith um, as well yeah, so um, my parents, um, they are still not Christians yet. I would say my mom is a believer because she did get baptized in the Baptist church in Singapore, but she, um, but she's not have hundred percent understanding about the Bible and about everything. So, uh, and my dad, he's to, not Christian. So, but she is open to the Bible, and it's yes. And my dad, he's open to gospel too, but um, he's not a Christian yet. Mm -hmm. um, but they are being supportive about our faith and our religion because they think, especially uh, my parents, they think after I became a Christian, I'm much, I'm a much better person. That's what they think. So they uh -huh. think, oh, it's like powerful. But I think for them, because... Um, because in China, what we learn is there's no God. And we also, what we learn is only the uneducated people believe in God. So the educated people, we believe in science, in Darwin's theory, we believe our ancestors are monkeys, and we believe uh, the Big Bang theory. So, so I think for Chinese, it's really hard for them to believe oh there's a superpower there is a god almighty is in control of everything yeah so i think what we had even talked about is the government wants to kind of take the place of what god is to us yeah yeah so exactly um, so would that be like part of the current ch challenges um, in China for brethren? So um, how how yes. is the church controlled um, in China? So before the pandemic, um, we do have like churches in China, but um, only uh, the only legalized churches are the state churches, means they have been registered with the government. But in order to be registered with the government, you need to compromise lots of things. For example, you need to say the government comes before God. And also, um, you cannot teach everything. You can teach um, be loving, ob um, obey the government, but you cannot mm -hmm. say anything in your teaching. You cannot say anything that disagrees with the government. And also, um, so that's before the pandemic. And then during the pandemic, and even now, they try to shut down all the churches. So, um, but we still have underground churches, means people try to learn the truth, even without being registered with the government officially. But the challenge is uh, you need to do it secretly, and you cannot worship as a big group. And also the government, uh, even for the state churches, the government is in control, like what you teach and um, maybe sometimes they even appoint who the preachers will be. So they try to control everything. And for the un underground churches, because they will consider it as illegal, so they have more controls. So um, for example, we know a brother and he tried to take his son to the church building but they cannot do it so openly and they try to do everything secretly, especially with the new law that you cannot bring your children to worship. Um, and also uh, the brother also shared that they were using, they were renting a place to worship on Sunday, but somehow the government learned that and some government official, the police, man went there and said they need to stop um that's the first warning and and also um so they couldn't worship there so i think they are looking for another place that they can worship mm -hmm. together safely um and also we also know some brethren they were trying to preach the gospel try to teach the truth but they have been arrested it's just because they were teaching the truth. Yeah, and so not the government's version of the Bible, pretty much. So um, I think so. Children are 
are not allowed to attend. Um, there's fear of being arrested and there's a lack of yeah. um, resources, I think, available as well, just because everything's so heavily monitored and the websites you yes. can visit or the things that you can can buy. Um, so that's that's a challenge for um, young families wanting to teach their children the Bible um, to be so limited in that way. Exactly. Yeah. So the state churches um, are how do they have to be? They have to be approved by the government, right? So they have to be registered, and no one can. Um, like, do they have any leadership within the church? Um, in the state churches? Yes, I think so. They do have like leaders in the church, but um, it's very different from what we understand about the leaders in the church because what we understand is like leaders are the servants because if you want to be the biggest, you are the smallest, you, oh. you are serving other people. And also for um, the elders or the preacher, they know they're sheep. But in the state churches, because there are so many people, like there'll be over hundreds or even thousands of people go there every Sunday. And so the leaders there will be really like leaders. They try to lead, but they do not know their sheep. So they do not know each individual. It's just like come and go. Right. Yeah. And so and I sometimes, think... go ahead. Yes. Go and ahead. sometimes even the government try to appoint who are the leaders. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that would cut out any um, any chance of someone actually teaching all of the Bible. Um, yeah. So, and I, I think we had talked about last time that, well, you had mentioned um, church was for people who believe in God um, as people who are uneducated or silly or, um, and I know a lot of the people that go to the state churches we're just usually elderly um, yes and well, well obviously because children aren't allowed to go yes but, um in in your culture or in china the culture is very focused on just self-improvement um or uh, is there like a, a focus on climbing the ladder more than just um well obviously more than than studying the Bible. So what is, um, maybe a better question would be, is like, what is their God basically in China? Yes, yes, I think that's a very good question. So basically the government teaches us God is the government. Government mm -hmm. is the God, even though they say, oh, there's no superior power, but they want you to believe that government is the God. So, and also I think for uh, many individuals, um, I think one is money. Many people worship money. They think with money, you can do everything. Nothing will be impossible with money. And also for some people, they might think family is the most important thing. So for example, we know some, um, like, um, some people might say, I cannot be a Christian because my family will not allow me to do that. Because in China to be a Christian is really challenging. And so sometimes many family members or your friends may try to keep a distance from you because you say you are a Christian. So because of that, because of peer pressure or some other challenges, so many people will say, Jen, I do not want to be a Christian. But like you say, I think, the government try to teach that government is God, but many people also think they want money, wealth, or power, or mm -hmm. fame. They are trying their very best to pursue those worthy things. So I think sometimes those become their God, money, fame, and power. And I think that's that's universal. That's world worldwide that people struggle with that, and that's that's promoted by american culture um as well and yeah it's a it's a good thing to um follow the golden rule or you know they pick and choose maybe what um christ what god calls us to so i think that's something that we can relate to um as well so um our 
So people are allowed to attend the state churches, and I think you said they're not allowed to worship in their own homes. Is there fear of arrest for that as well? Yes. So um, I think if you do it quietly in your home, it should be fine. But um, many people, like many brethren, they will worship together as like family, like underground church. So for example, a few family will gather together and worship God. But um some um but um I know that um there were some issues um because some neighbor will just report mm -hmm. and call the police, say, Oh, there are so many people in that house. So the police will go there and say, You need to stop that. And so um like I know um there's um an underground church in a city. So before they all gather together to worship in a sister's house, but now they need to um, divide the bigger group into smaller groups. So you will not bring too much attention. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how can we help the brethren over there? What are some ways that we can help? Mm, I think... Um, I think one thing is, um, I think many Chinese brethren need more encouragement. Yes, um, to know that, um, you know, there are so many, um, even though they are facing so many challenges, but I think I admire um, everyone because it's so hard, it's so challenging to be a Christian there. Um, and also, I think we do not have lots of material, Bible material there, especially the children material. So I think that would be very helpful. And also, um, because in China, the thing is the percentage of creation is so small. So we don't have like, uh, we don't really have, um, they don't really understand denomination was is what does denomination mean? Because they just think as long as you believe in Jesus, we are all Christians. So, but then that that's the problem because many false teachers will go there to teach them wrong thing. But we are very thankful. We have a lot, several um, preachers to teach the truth. Mm -hmm. So they are not false teachers, but they are good teachers. They are teaching the truth. But the only thing is many of them, most of them, most of them, they do not speak Chinese. So, mm -hmm. so we definitely need some um, Chinese translation. So these brethren who are so eager to learn the truth can understand, can learn the truth and understand the truth. But so there's she's a great need for, for translators as well. And, um, and I even talked about this with the Westbrooks, how, um, when they moved from Texas to Puerto Rico, you know, they had to study the language, they had to learn it. Um, and there's, there's just more of a need for that. And, and if we learn the language, um, then we can connect more with brethren over there and how, yes. um, how encouraging that would be that someone feels loved enough that someone's willing to learn um, yes. their language. That would be nice, then, yes. Yeah, so our Zooms still monitor, like if if someone actually, if there's other people who actually do know Chinese um, and want to reach out with some of the brethren, would they be able to do that now? Yes, we we, we can do that. Yes, um, uh, for example, we use WeChat, which like almost every Chinese brethren can access to WeChat. Yes, we can definitely uh, reach out to the Chinese brethren. Yes. Yeah. So I'll be sure to list your information in the description. So if anyone who does ch know Chinese and um, wants to connect with that, or even yeah. if they just, maybe if they don't even know, um, yeah. if they Chinese. don't know yeah. Chinese, like I know how encouraged, that must be so encouraging to the brethren over in China to see that, hey, this person just wants to yes. be along in the chat to yes. um, be encouraging and be a part of yes. um, the study. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah, even any brethren, they do not know Chinese, they can still uh, reach out. Like, yeah, you can share my information. 
and I will connect them with the Chinese brethren. I think they'll be so happy to be encouraged. Uh, and also, you, yeah. Uh, many, yeah, and also now many Chinese brethren, because um, many of the Chinese brethren, they do not know English very well, but uh, they use like some tran online translator, like something like Google Translate, because Google, um, YouTube, Facebook, uh, our blog in China and lots of other but we have like some Chinese software we can translate mm -hmm. into English so the brethren were using that to communicate um uh, with um yeah so mm -hmm. language barrier will not be a problem even though the online translation have lots of mistakes so you need to kind of guess what they mean you know like yes but I think yeah anyone if anyone wants to connect with the brethren, we'll love to do that, yes. Yes, that would be a great way that we can encourage. And actually, I'd like to know, you can message me after we get off here. I'd love to know when y'all's next study is. And sure. uh, I'd love to join. I'd love to be a yes, part Yes, please, that. yes. So, and maybe even share some of the um, illustrations that we have, um, if any kids, want to join or watch as well where we could yes like there so we are working yeah. um we're we're starting the process um now of um, working with tin and working um with the west brooks for spanish we're um, trying to work through getting more translations for our products so the children over in china can have can learn the bible and have those resources yes. too and um so we're really excited to be working with Sin with that and um, with other people in Africa as well. So a lot of beginnings um, right now. But thank you so much for joining me today, Tin, and for um, just sharing what our brother and sisters in Christ go through in there to just be able to worship, to just try to be able to pursue the truth. And we know that um, how we can pray for them more effectively um and be encouraging so thank you everyone for joining um today's missionary spotlight and um we will see you next month thank you everyone <laughs>